it's uh, really interesting to have this talk right after the previous talk because our main question, as you can see from the title, is when to best remind. And for this one, we used an online uh, course. So, um, but before we click on the course and hopefully should don't fall for the fish, um, I will shortly give some motivation and some introduction into the topic. Um, but as we already talked about, phishing is still a really prevailing topic. As you can see, there are still warnings about people being phished. So companies have to warn their users that they don't fall for emails that are looking like they are sent from them. I think this graph also was used by the previous talk that the anti-phishing working group is uh, finding increasing phishing attacks and even has the most phishing attacks in a month in history in December 2021. So the problem still exists and the costs are rising and rising. So we think that phishing awareness and education measures are needed because there's no final technical solution. Often in the end, the user has to make a decision. And for this, there are like different ways how this measure can look like. You can have an instructor being in front of you and telling you what to look for. There is also text messages or text leaflets that you can read through. There are apps or serious games as in the previous talk, which you can use to play a bit and learn about detecting phishing. There are videos teaching you to detect phishing. And in our case, there's even online learning to detect phishing. But the overall question is like, um, as we all know, we forget stuff. So over time, if we are not actively training our knowledge and most of us are not actively uh, training themselves in detecting phishing every day. So you, people will forget stuff. And our overall question is like, when is the best timing to remind people after they had a measure in some way seen before? So we have been doing research in this in the past. So there is a paper on a video measure where we looked into pre and post testing and then checked two months later and they were still significantly better, even though you already see there's some small decline. Then there was a paper on a instructor based training for people. And there we looked for pre and post testing. And then after four months and after six months, and we found that after four months, they but students were still significantly better, but after six months, they were not. And then there was an app which was tested and they found, and we found that after five months, the app was still significantly better. And today the question is, how is it about our e-learning? But before I want to go over the results, I want to quickly show you how our e-learning looked like. So we, in total, we had 12 chapters with different topics, how to detect phishing, for example, this was the topic small deviations in the hue section where we on one side had like text, which people can read, but we also showed videos of stuff, how to create phishing emails and make it a bit more relating for the people. And after each chapter, they had an exercise they had to take and they had to pass the exercise to be uh, able to continue. And in this exercise, those things from the uh, actual chapter were tested. Like in this exercise, people had to mark the who section, which was before taught to them where this is. So I, our hypothesis is, first of all, that after uh, our course, the no push course, the e-learning, uh, the uh, participants were still significantly better, else uh, there would be no sense to continue and look for retention. and. Then the second uh, hypothesis is to test five months later, as we saw uh, for the instructor base, something in between four and six months was apparently the sweet spot. And for the app, there was already five months. So we wanted to see if the e-learning is something in around this time. Our general study design was that there was normal introduction into the task. Then there was the pre-knowledge quiz with some informed consent, some, some self-generated code. So we can later on combine the data of the participants without knowing who they actually were. Then a description and then screenshots. I will go over how these screenshots looked like later on. And an access code, that access code was needed for them to later on provide us the proof that they participated. 
Then there was the security awareness and education measure, so our e-learning, and then there was the post test. Um, again, with the self-generated code to leak the data, and again, the same screenshots and demographic questions in the access code. Some uh, payments to already motivate people to continue working, so they were told they get the first payment and then the second one after phase three, which was the retention question, quiz, the same one again five months later with the code, the scenario description and the screenshots to test them, and then the second payment. So how did our quiz look like? We took uh, actual email examples from well-known companies such as Lufthansa, PayPal, DHL, you see an Amazon example. Don't be surprised by the black bars for the uh, copyright. We excluded them from the publication, but in the actual questionnaire, all these uh, examples were completely looking as they were legitimate because they were actually legitimate. We took legitimate comp emails from these companies and for legitimate emails, we had them stayed completely the same. And for the phishing ones, we changed stuff that we wanted to specifically change. For example, we changed in this example, the sender, or we changed the URL or something like this. In total, we had 17 examples, phishing ones and 17 um, legitimate ones. And the number is based on different phishing tricks we used in our sample. Um, yeah. So what are the results? The overall results are that for the pre-knowledge participants were okay-ish for the legitimate ones, but were nearly guessing only for the fishing ones. So in overall around 70% for the post-knowledge, they were increasing for both the legitimate ones and the fishing ones, even though the fishing ones increased more because they were like way lower before. And for the retention ones, the legitimate ones were roughly the same. And the phishing ones declined a bit, but the overall performance was still quite similar. Overall, we looked at different phishing tricks. So for one, we changed, uh, we had some phishing tricks where people were uh, asked in the content to send information. I think there was an example before about this. Um, then we did some brand related, uh, non brand related domain changing. So we did some rubbish in the domain to have like a really, really easy trick if people know where the actual domain is. And then we change stuff where we put the actual organization in the path or in the subdomain. So there is the brand related somewhere, but not in the actual domain. And then we tested like some small deviations in the domain where we had like smaller errors. People are difficult to spot. We had some uh, special link manipulation in adding uh, mismatches of the link text in the actual link. And we also had um, attachments. But for more details, uh, we can later on in the panel discussion discuss or in the paper there also for all the phishing tricks, the real numbers. So in general, our discussions from what we found was that the small deviations in the domain needs improvement, especially for the retention, because people, especially in this area, were decreasing in their actual detection rate so apparently this was like the one area that stands out the most where people need the retention knowledge to actually be able to detect this once. Um, and maybe we need to check more about the model of uh, phishing because we had like the really easy ones, we thought at least easy ones, where people were asked to send information back. And for the retention ones, we also found that these were not working as we expected them to work. So people were only about 70% in the retention study um, uh, detecting these emails as phishing ones. And I think that was even the example I mentioned in the beginning with the uh, aviation company warning their users to not send back information. So that is actually a real example. And um, there are still open topics like URLs used by and links that can only be recognized with tools like short URLs, which are really difficult in this context to um, test because without a tool to actually derive the final URL, people can not be tested if they can detect it because short URLs can both be legitimate or phishing. So one cannot from the URL say if it, it's one or the other. Or, um, domains that can only be recognized as phishing if all legitimate domains are known. 
uh, in this case, we mean something. If you add something like Amazon minus shop.com or something like this, in some cases, this actually happens and this is a legitimate uh, domain. So it is a problem, but it is difficult to teach people how to detect this because if there are actual legitimate examples, then mm. testing for this is really difficult without even further testing people in front if they know all the legitimate domains so they can actually derive the legitimate ones from the phishing ones. Um, one thing that we found from our study to previous studies was that we used this time real organizations compared to artificial organizations and there was nearly no difference in the performance. Um, and one thing that we wanted to test in future is testing every participant with feedback on the actual quiz performance because there was the exercises for the e-learning, but there was no feedback for the uh, quiz performance. And we want to test if this has maybe more influence also on the retention when they get feedback like this. So in summary, we created a different security awareness measure with e-learning aspects. Um, we tested a lot of different things and we found that around the six month range, there's, there seems to be a sweet spot to do retention, uh, to do reminder measures for people to refresh their knowledge. Um, and exercises apparently help participants to be, have a positive uh, effect because the third paper with the instructor one did not have an exercise for everyone to participate. So maybe that is the reason why this one performed a bit less uh, good than the other ones.